have you packed away the coronation? To be honest, I've still got my bunting up. I'm thinking red, white and blue might be quite nice and seasonal for the whole of the summer period. We'll have to wait and see how long that lasts. Hello and welcome, I'm Julie from Julie Davis Flower Workshops and Flower Start, the online flower arranging classes. If you like all things royal, you've been enjoying the coronation and you love flowers, then this video is for you. Let me take you to how many flower festivals? Three flower festivals over the coronation weekend. The first was a lovely foam-free flower festival in a local village church and the other two I reckon probably used flower foam and probably looked a bit more like you'd expect a flower festival to look. Now if you enjoy my videos please do consider subscribing to my channel. Why not buy me a coffee? You'll find a link to that in the description underneath this video and better still why don't you join my membership group and I'll be sharing lots of behind the scenes going on and you can also watch my videos advert free. First of all, a huge thank you to the church warden at St Peter's Church in Awe. We got to this flower festival really late in the day and she was kind enough to hold on until my friend and I had finished visiting. So the theme for this festival was foam free flowers and doesn't it look absolutely amazing. It is just a fabulous what you can do on a limited budget without damaging the environment. And of course the church flower rangers here are really lucky because this church is out in the countryside next to a few large houses and there's plenty of opportunity for foraging from the wayside and in local gardens. In this arrangement you'll see the purple of lilacs and the blue is actually green alknet, which I understand the Romans used to use for dyeing. And then the flush of bright yellow from foliage from nearby gardens. And here, what could be simpler than a vase packed full of flower and cherry? Absolutely wonderful, just so simple and so easy to do. And another vase arrangement, can you see the long trails coming out at the side? That spirea bridal bouquet, and I can't quite remember what the little yellow flower is going through the middle. These arrangements on the windowsill look fabulous silhouetted against the stained glass windows. And then you'll notice there's some building work going on at the church. Well, actually, that hasn't quite happened yet. They're still fundraising. And this arrangement here with the cow parsley and then the yellow heads of the Alexanders that grows in the, the grass verges on the lanes at the moment. So in season at the moment, and it's one of those plants that you can you can use to eat. Just be really careful though that you do know what you're picking. I understand that you can cook the stems as if you would leek or celery and you can even preserve them in a sugar syrup to make your own Angelica style decoration for your homemade cakes. But wherever you're foraging in the wild for food just make sure you 100% know what it is that you're picking. Don't take any risks. Then we move up there's some euphorbia there from the garden. And of course, that's got a milky sap, which can be irritating to your skin. Notice how wide the window sills are in this church. There's plenty of opportunity for firmly holding a vase flat in place without risk of it toppling over. And another hedgerow themed arrangement, which would have been made at no cost at all. So we drove home after that first flower festival and making plans for the following day and then we came across a sign saying church open so we popped inside this second church it wasn't a flower festival as such it was just the normal church opening but they were having a little bit of a social for members of the community so we were very warmly welcomed so i'll show you a little bit of that footage now we weren't planning to visit St Mary Magdalene Church, but we noticed a sign out front saying that the church was open for visitors. So it wasn't actually set up for church um, flower festival, but there were some lovely little displays to look at. We we're here primarily to toast the king. So we got a hot cup of tea and a glass of fizz. 
Now, there was a bit of an ongoing theme with all these festivals, not so much the Royal Connection, but my friend and I managed to get our timings wrong all weekend long. So the flower festival we went to, I've just shown you, we got there within 20 minutes of it closing and we'd been the only visitors for a while and I'm sure the church flower warden was desperate to go home and very kindly kept the church open for us. The following morning we went to Newington and we didn't know what time the church flower festival opened. We'd only got word of it. They were so badly advertised that you have to sort of have this secret underground network. You find out where all these church flower festivals are taking place. So we didn't know what time it started. We guessed there'd be a church service in the morning. We got there about half 11 in the morning, but the doors didn't open until midday. So we were in a bit of a quandary. Do we just go in? Do we wait outside? And in the end, we decided to try, try the church door because quite often the churches are open all day long for the general public. So we had the whole place to ourselves. It was quite magnificent. This church festival, flower festival had a totally different theme from the one the day before. Very much, you know, red, white and blue. And they got the community involved as well. So there were lots of tin cans lined up, which the children from the local nursery and primary school had made. It was just so lovely. And the following morning, we drove out to St Mary the Virgin in Newington. Huge thanks here to my friend Lisa, who helped out with some filming. This flower festival had a totally different feel from the church arrangements from yesterday very professionally undertaken and as you'll notice using flower foam to secure all the flowers in place so we were welcomed by this white regal purple arrangement with a fabric puddling on the floor and a pair of crowns as a flower arranger i always like to have a little bit of a look around the back of the arrangements just to award marks for the coverage or not of the flower foam. So here you can see someone has tried to cover it up, but perhaps a little more greenery would have helped out there. This was very much a community affair and the children from the local nursery and primary school had made tin can arrangements to celebrate the coronation. So there we had some little tulips made out of tin foil. You'll see various pictures of King Charles, union flags everywhere, a variety of flowers, some from the supermarket and others cut from gardens and some even crafted out of paper. It made the whole festival seem really family friendly and brought a smile to our faces. When you walk through the church doors, you never know quite what to expect. Every church is so different, but this one was absolutely magnificent in terms of its age and architecture. More of the regal purples here with Lysianthus and the purple status, a little bit of Alstromeria and then the sea of dotty baby's breath or chip. And a rather stately crown here. This is a layered up design. So picking up on the lovely golden colours of the crown, I'm guessing here with the yellow roses, the red too and lots of lovely garden foliage as the marble leaf there of the Arum Italicum Pictum. It looks rather nice against that pillar. And of course we want to have a little look around the back and see how well that flower foam has been covered up. It's always so interesting to see how other flower rangers tackle their projects. But a fabulous job put together by a team of volunteers. Down the aisle, lots of the pewens had these little arrangements, much as you would do for a wedding. So here it's red, white and blue with the red and white roses and the tiny blue heads of the forget-me-not. And for those of you who want to know how it's fastened, it's a piece of florist ribbon threaded through the paddle, which is the plastic handled container with a block of flower foam on the front. And another look at those pew ends from the side, so you can see how flat they are lying against the end of the seating there. 
I think these are probably depictions of crowns. I'm looking at them from above so you can see the, the fur edged rim with the chrysanthemums, the choisier and the baby's breath and little jewels added in with round trees, fruit pastels and then lined up against the church windowsills or on the church windowsills there must have been hundreds of these tin cans absolutely glorious and you could look so closely and have a little smile about how each of the children had interpreted their brief of making something celebratory for the king I wonder if these tin can flowers are giving you any ideas or perhaps you've got a favourite. Look at this one with the washi tape and then a flower made out of a fairy cake paper case. Lots of bejeweled items. I'm guessing this might have been made by one of the children at the local nursery. And then we move on to a, an adult sized flower arrangement in the red, white and blue. The blue here is irises and as we go around the back someone has very competently covered up the foam. And just taking a wider look at the church here there were lots of these sort of faded red friezes painted on the walls. Another reason to go back to the church to find out more about those. And then some lovely spring colours. I think there's chives there with buttercups, some irises and yellow tulips. One very fancy tin can there, we're wearing its bow tie. More irises, yellow tulips, a head of hyacinth just falling over there at the back. Now doesn't this look so eye-catching and festive? Red, white and blue again. And can you see how the ribbon has been taken down the leg of the pedestal there just to connect the colours further? So the Blues here are the irises, and then just the slight purple tones of the freesia, highly scented. So using here the red roses and white roses, and then the gypsophilia, the gyp or the baby's breath. I'm not quite sure what you call that where you are. In a view here of the altar, the pedestal arrangement across to the side. And this little arrangement here with the dyed blue lilies, I think probably they came from the supermarket like this. It's a matter of personal taste, but sometimes it's very difficult to get a blue flower in nature. They tend to be the purples. So it's a case of trying to do the best you can to interpret the red, white and blue theme. C.R. Charles Rex for King Charles. Now I think the date on this tombstone said 1587. Can you imagine that just goes to show how ancient this church is. And up on the raised tomb there, another red, white and blue arrangement. I think this has probably been made to view from the front. From the side, it just looks like it comes to a very abrupt end. Perhaps it just should have had some of the flowers at a more relaxed angle at the other side. Now we have a little look round this end of the church. The poppy memorials, and there's a little bit of history in the display cabinets here, including the local military personnel who fell during the wars. I think probably it's one of those cases where they turn the page over regularly so you can find a little bit more about previous residents of the parish. And then from the solemnity of the past and remembering those who have fallen for us, the joyfulness of balloons and the party theme. Can you see that the lilies have still got their pollen on them? If I had these at home, I would take the pollen out, but the church is lovely and cool. And I think probably here they add a lovely uh, three-dimensional quality. And actually the colouring picks up on the fresco paintings in the alcove. And then one last sweep around the church. And as the camera pans down, notice the streamers, the red, white and blue ribbons that have been added to each of the pillars. A very effective, festive detail. And then we go outside, a typical Kentish scene, a farmhouse in the distance with the conical roofs of the oast houses. That's where 
we dry the hops to make the beer. So after the Church Flower Festival at Newington, we got word on the secret grapevine that there was another Church Flower Festival just a couple of miles up the road. So we Google mapped it and found our way after a couple of mishaps. Gorgeous church again. I'll show you the footage where we overlooked the um, well, the church is on high ground, so you could see out to the orchards beyond. It was just absolutely charming. And again, a very professionally laid out church flower festival. Of course, not necessarily professionals doing the arranging, just very experienced church flower rangers, and it really did show. So I'll leave you to watch that. Have a look and see. Slightly different flowers used in this church flower festival. Um, compared to the other but have a look and see what flowers you can name that are red white and blue and on the subject of red white and blue I do think it's quite a festive colour for the summertime and I don't know whether you saw the video I published last time round and that was where I did red white and blue flower arrangements for my garden but not using the intense red white and blue using more muted shades of the pale forget-me-not and then the pinker tones of the native geranium so you haven't already watched that I will leave a link to that in the notes underneath this video this church is St Michael's and all the angels in Hartlip what a fabulous name we found out about this church flower festival from the lady who is setting up the teas back in Newington and what took us by surprise, or what took our eye, was the amazing view. The church set up on high land, and as you look out across the back of the church, you can see the orchards beyond. We arrived too early for the start of this flower festival too, so we no, uh, no refreshments. We were quite hungry by the end of the day. And look here, the festive napkins, which includes the Invicta horse, which is the emblem of Kent. So enticing plates, which were empty. <laughs> but lovely and shiny, waiting homemade cakes. And this caught my eye, this little pedestal urn. I don't know whether you saw the video I filmed about Kelmscott, William Morris's summer home, but there was exactly the same vase as that in the local church there. So I'll try and remember to leave a link to that in the description underneath this video. So again, a lovely village church decked out in red, white and blue. Again, quite wide window sills. You can see that that little plastic tray there fits on quite securely. And as you go around, see what red, white and blue flowers you can spot. These blue here. Can you guess what they are? We'll get closer. It's delphiniums. So whereas the other churches had used forget-me-nots and irises and some freesia, here it's delphiniums, which would have come from the florist. Blue orinchium thistles, little star-shaped flowers, and the bright red scarlet of the chrysanthemums. And then as we move down, this has been arranged on a wrought iron pedestal, just a thin metal rail going to the base of the floor. And you can see how they've trailed some ivy down there just to, scar to disguise the foot of the pedestal. So many lovely stained glass windows. And here, God save the king. And the anthem is flanked by hellebores. And I think it's the purple of the honesty flower. We pan round to the altar and get a little bit closer. An afternoon tea has been laid out for two. I'm guessing the cellophane wrap there is going to be removed once the church flower festival was officially opened. There's Spanish bluebells there. They're a garden variety of bluebell, not the kind that you find in the woods, which always nod over to one side. And I think there might even be a little bit of the Alexanders in the base of those little posy arrangements. And a fabulous crown here sitting up on the altar. But don't be mistaken, these are actually artificial flowers. 
I think perhaps the white at the bottom uh, is a hydrangea that's been taken apart and then the stocks and little bits of lavender making up the purple velvet of the crown. Very cleverly done. I don't know about you, but we always struggle to find out when local church flower festivals are taking place. I don't think they get very wild, widely advertised. So if you're organising a church flower festival, why don't you let your local flower clubs know? And you may well get more visitors. And of course, the more visitors you get, the more funds are going to be raised for your church. And if you live in Kent, I've actually set up a Facebook page called Flower Festivals in Kent. So if you message me about your church flower festival, I will make sure I advertise it on that page for you. This arrangement put me in mind of the flowers we saw at the first church back at Orr, a very naturalistic looking style. I wonder whether that one was foam free too. And here, Kokodama tiny little oak seedlings, saplings, wrapped up in moss. And then this church flower festival was actually sponsored by a local nursery, I think it was. But what took my eye here were the amazing tulips. Just look at that veining and look at the two naughty tulips to the left hand side. I think probably when this arrangement was first put in place, those tulips were lying down slightly, filling up that little gap. And overnight they sprung straight up and done their thing, as tulips do. Another little crown here, with the clever use of the silver foil covering up the flower foam base. So a tightly packed jip, giving that real sense of fur around the edge of the crown. And then the fleur-de-lis detail picked up with the fleur-de-lis shape of the irises. And the velvety section in the middle is a massed heads of burgundy coloured Gerbera. Now the next arrangement I'm going to show you isn't made with live flowers at all. It's a paper crafted arrangement and this is a bouquet of delphiniums and there's a little note underneath explaining how much King Charles likes the delphinium. So it's really lovely to see that linkage between what the professional church flower rangers have done or the experienced church flower rangers and then the children from the local school. Next to the Kokodama, I noticed that there was a haiku. So a haiku is a 17 syllable poem comprising of three lines, five syllables on the first line, then seven and five syllables on the last line. And to go with it, an Ikebana style arrangement with the oak going over the two regal red roses. And we were lucky enough that King Charles and Queen Camilla were able to join us on the day. And then back out to that amazing view in the churchyard. So the tables were set up, we were guessing, for afternoon teas. And sadly, we missed them. Lovely blue skies now, such a change from the weather first thing in the morning. And then as we continue down the path to the arch, looking out over the orchards, such a lovely Kentish view. We spent so much time at the last church flower festival that we didn't actually have to lock up. We thought we would have to close the door and switch off the lights ourselves because we'd arrived before the official opening time. But fortunately other people were dropping things off. A beautiful wedding style cake arrived. It was absolutely incredible. Sadly, I didn't get any footage of that. As I say, we spent so long at that church flower festival that when we drove off to go to on our way, we discovered they were setting up for their street party and they had a road closure in place. So we had to drive through all these party preparations and then get out of the car, move the bollards and then put them back in place. And in actual fact, that was Monday, which was designated street party day. That happened three times during the course of the afternoon. 
and the last church we visited was St Mary's at Chartham. So this is a church that I have visited before. I might even have blogged about previous church flower festival there. I'll still have to see whether I can find that and I'll leave a link to that in the notes underneath this video. So there was just one single arrangement in this particular church which was on the font. Beautiful to look at but if we'd known there hadn't been a full flower festival there we may well have given it a miss. Now I spotted a picture of this arrangement in one of the Facebook pages for the Kent Area Flower Clubs and I'd rather assume there might have been a whole church flower festival to go alongside it but no, this was the only arrangement in the church but it was well worth the visit. As a favour to my husband, I've agreed to walk the dog in order that he will come out and do something with me later during his normal dog walking designated hour. So I've done a loop around through the allotments, across the field and down to the local church, which is in the countryside. And I thought I'd just have a peek in the church. The doors are closed, but there's something rather lovely in the porch. Can you spot it or can you spot them? Look at this glorious flower arrangement, really, really naturalistic in style. So it's a crock pot at the bottom with two little handles, little earthenware pot. And then there is some of the green Gilda Rose right at the bottom, the snowballs. And then it is apple blossom, I'm guessing. Cherry blossom, not quite sure but huge, long boughs of blossom, really beautiful. And on the windowsill on the other side of the porch, I think that looks like a 1970s ceramic pate dish, you know, the kind that you used to get at the delicatessen at the supermarket. So I'm guessing that's an arrangement in flower foam with perhaps the leftovers. I can see some air and metallic and pictum leaves, some spotted laurel, the orcuba, and a few bits of variegated and green green, which I can't identify, and some roses, which are looking a little bit sad, but no doubt the flower arranging committee will be swapping those out in due course. And I have been to this church before, so if you're interested in more church flower festival videos, Make sure you check out the playlist. I'll leave details of that in the notes, the description underneath this video. The last few minutes of this video is all about the royal memorabilia. So these are clips that I have filmed on my outings over the last few days. Mainly, I would say, taken a few from local charity shops. They really seem to have pulled things out of the bag and created, curated lovely shop front displays including commemoration mugs from previous coronations, previous jubilees, including items from royal weddings, everything in festive red, white and blue. Now look here, there's even a knitted celebration cake. And the display in this shop window was bunting made out of little festive handkerchiefs. I'm not quite sure what the significance is of the little pie birds there that let out the steam when you bake a pie in the oven. But they've been set on a very regal looking chair. And then back into town, I don't know whether your local WI does this, the knitted and crocheted toppers for the post boxes. So we see them at Christmas time, at Easter, and they've really pulled the hat out of the bag this time with their knitted displays to mark the coronation. Let me know in the comments whether your WI does this sort of thing too. It's something that's just peculiar to Kent. There's a red London bus and an old fashioned red telephone box. And then another display in the charity shop window with a fabulous festive dress 
with the Bear Stream Guards and the Beef Eaters in the Tower of London. This shop had a collection of stamps to commemorate lots of previous royal engagements. And there's Prince Charles, or King Charles now, as a boy at his mother's coronation. More stamps. I'm not quite sure whether these were for sale or whether they were just being donated for the sake of the shop window display. Look, even the local knitting shops got in on the act of a knitted Union flag cushion cover there. And then you'll notice that the huge vertically hanging flag here is hanging the wrong way round. That wide stripe at the top should be above the white line, not underneath it, like it's shown here on the patchwork cover. So that brings me to the end of my Coronation Flower Festival video. Do let me know in the comments or whether you had a favourite exhibit or whether you have been inspired to host your own flower festival. During the normal, the traditional time of the year to holding a festival, I would say is during the summer months. That's all for me for now and I'll see you again next time.